<laughs> Finley's looking at me like I'm a crazy person. What are you doing? Just filming the intro to my video. Oh, look at Larry. Look Hi, Larry. <laughs> it's a bunch of moss. <laughs> loved ones and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my garden. I wanted to film a video today with the sweet sounds of my neighbor's weed whacker or leaf blower or whatever that is and then just you know my dogs are here Finley's behind the camera over there he's getting some gardening done and I just wanted to say hello and then start this old intro a little bit closer up. Greetings welcome to a gardening video if you're here to learn some things I'm excited for you to do so. Okay. Larry, you got dirt all over me, brother. That was horrible. This guy's fucking crazy. I must say, I wish the leaf blower wasn't happening, but um, you know, that's life out in the country, baby. What can you do? Also, the sun is so bright. So, hello. I wanted to join you today for a video on beginner's tips to garden. Because in the current climate, with this horrible global pandemic, coronavirus, quarantined individuals, all of the things. Social distancing, people are afraid to go to the supermarket. People are afraid that things will run out. And guess what? That's why I'm here, to talk to you today about growing your own food. It's very important. You can do it in your own backyard. You could do it in your own apartment as well. You could get a grow light. There's a couple of handfuls of different things that you could do for apartment growing. I do want to say that um, I'm not an expert on growing in an apartment, but I will link a couple of resources down below for um, good video creators who have made videos on like growing in pots in your kitchen or with a grow light or they have made some kind of nice setup. So there are ways to do it in your home. You can grow some herbs in your kitchen window. You can maybe try to grow a little basil, something like that. Start off somewhere, okay? Um, but yeah, I really just wanted to make this because I know that with like people's fears of resources running out, um, this is just really great because then you don't even have to go and buy your produce at the supermarket. You can just harvest what you have and use it for whatever season, you know, whatever season is giving you some nice bearing gifts. So today I want to talk about how we started gardening quickly. Um, we really just started once we moved to Oregon from Los Angeles because we had the land and we built these garden beds, which I'll show you in a second, from ripped apart pallets. And uh, we started with those two beds and then we dug an additional one. I'll give you like a general overview of our garden plots this year and what we will be using again and what we're planting and why. But yeah, I really just started gardening because I thought it would be fun to do. And we didn't do that great our first year. Like you definitely learn more as the years go on. And my neighbor, Olya, over here has helped me so much with just like learning the land and what to plant when. And so that's a huge thing is like growing by the season and for your specific climate, what you can grow during certain times. You can look on like Farmer's Almanac or I'm pretty sure, I'll link it down below, but Olya sent me a photo of hers, which is super helpful because I didn't have to get my own. But she has this nice little chart that basically tells you like when the last frost is in your area and then when to start certain things per that last frost. So we've been planting things based off of that. And I'm gonna show you what we have today. Um, but yeah, gardening isn't really as like serious or crazy as people make it seem. Like you could easily just have a couple of pots in your house or in your backyard or something that uh, you know grow well in the conditions around where you live and then just kind of go from there. And we've just kind of like expanded our land and our garden plots every year. You know, we just like learn some more and we're like, hey, we should grow X, Y, and Z and do this this year. And um, yeah, I just get so many questions all the time about like, how do I start gardening? And it's like, well, first, 
I would say figure out where you live, what you can plant for right now, and just start there, and it'll change. I'm sorry if you can hear Olya's chickens, they're getting a little rowdy. Um, but as the summer comes, there will be more things that you can introduce to your garden space and more seeds you can plant. You can germinate your seeds to start them in your house and then plant them in the ground, or you can buy starts from your local nursery as well and support your local nurseries that way, which is super fun. I love my local nursery so much. They have so much good stuff, and they always, like our plants from them grow so well once we get starts. So that's what we did the first year is we bought starts instead of seeds. Last year we bought seeds. And my other number one beginner's tip I would say is have good soil. Um, you can send in for a soil test if you just look it up online. Soil testing, you can do that. Um, but also you can just add general amendments to your soil. Like if it needs to be broken up a little bit, you can add mulch, you can add leaves, natural things around your house. Composting is great. We compost our pig manure as well as our vegetable scraps and like coffee grinds and certain paper that can be broken down and won't like taint our compost so we use like a portion of that last year we put <laughs> the chickens are really loud today last year we put our compost from our veggie scraps on this plot and i'll link the video on the screen where i was doing a q a and harvesting that stuff but most of that i didn't even plant it just appeared because the seeds from like squash we had eaten or like i'd scooped out the guts of and then put it in our compost it just like appeared and i grew so much acorn squash on accident and like Gardening is just so much fun. I love it. It's great. It feeds our family. We can can certain things and keep them. Like we've had multiple cans of tomatoes for multiple months and I just add them to random soups and stews and sauces and it's just great. I love it. You can do pickling. You can do fermenting with the things that you grow. It's really just the pinnacle of self-sufficiency, which is something that Finley and I both take great pride in. So. This all being said, I'm going to show you where we started with building our garden beds. It's so bright I can barely see anything. Hello. Okay, so this was the first bed that we built and as you can see, we really, it just has like these panels on the sides over here and we just ripped these apart from pallets that we found outside of random places. Wooden pallets can be found behind mainly like big grocery stores, out by dumpsters and stuff like that. So we just collected a bunch of them, ripped them apart with hammers, and then re-nailed them together in these garden boxes. So we have two planting beds here. And last year, this all had tomatoes in it. And then the one behind us over there had tomatoes and peppers. And this year, I did garlic around the perimeter of both of these beds, which is great to keep deer out because we do indeed have deer. As a lot of places do, they really love to eat all of our things, which I don't really mind. I'm more of like a, hey, if you want it, you can get some. That's the mindset I have when I plant stuff. Like I know that I'm feeding not only my family and myself and we have an abundance of things, but I'm also feeding animals like rabbits and little deer and people go to great lengths to keep pests out of their garden, but I don't really care. I'm just kind of like, it's gonna happen. <laughs> but anyways, this year we decided to do a crop rotation following the tomatoes with leafy greens. So in here, I believe this is like lettuce and broccoli around here. Finley just did these today, so that's why I'm generally unsure what they are. Um, but just like leafy green stuff is all in here. But that's definitely another thing to pay attention to, just like crop rotation and figuring out what to plant after certain things. And that's something that will restore your soil after you have taken nutrients out of it to like grow your tomatoes or your root vegetables. Like you're gonna wanna plant something afterwards that's gonna restore something back in, like nitrogen to the soil with peas and stuff. And doing crop rotation and learning about that and companion planting is something that we started doing in the past few years. And it's helped a lot, so yeah, man. I was going blind, so I changed the angle but I would say that our garden beds do really well because of what we put in them. Um, like I was saying with the soil and making sure that you have nice amendments in your soil and whatnot, it's really helped us to have mulching on the top of our soil 
and also in our really big bed that I started this video in over there. We planted a bunch of clover seed all over the bottom of that last year as ground cover and it restored a bunch of nitrogen to our soil and it honestly made the soil so healthy in there. So many of our plants thrived so much like they never had before. And also with all of those random seeds popping up from us putting our compost in there, it was just like the most abundance I've ever seen. And so it's just really nice to see that stuff like actually work. And also you can get really like experimental with your garden planning after a while and just be like, I want it to look like this aesthetically. And I want these things over here and those things over there. And obviously as you learn more, you'll get like crazier with it. But I'm just gonna give you a general overview of my beds this year because this is like peak starting season for us. It is late March. We're getting stuff in the ground today. We've germinated some peas, some onions, and some other things that Finley is planting. I'm pretty sure it was just peas, onions, and spinach is what we germinated and we're planting seeds of today. And then the rest of these are starts that he got from our friend Athena. So that's what I just showed you of all of those greens. Okay, so excuse my shadow. This is basically what I just showed you guys though. So as you can see, there's garlic all around the perimeter and Finley is getting after some planting with the dogs behind him over here. Um, we have a great big artichoke over here that's just been existing for a while and it gets really really big in the summer and goes crazy and it provides a lot of shade for plants that need it as well so I'll put things under there like lettuce that need um, just some nice it needs like a nice leaf covering it a little bit <laughs> it just needs to be planted in partial sun so you learn stuff like that over the course of when you start doing this stuff, you know? I also have this kale plant that comes back every season. This was one of the first plants we ever planted, literally in 2018, still alive in 2020. It's been eaten down by many deer, but she prevails. And I weeded all of these beds recently. This is one of the first beds that we dug actually, and I wouldn't suggest putting horse manure on your garden plots. Our pig manure that we compost is good, but um, we used horse manure when we first started and it made the this bed specifically very muddy and like mucky and just, it needed a lot to break it up. So we added a lot of like hay and mulch and just things to break up the soil and it's been slowly coming back. But I think we're just gonna kind of leave this bed this year, at least for right now, because we planted some um, random flower seeds in here and we're just gonna wait for them to come up, but we're not focusing on a vegetable bed with that this year. These are our little peas that have germinated that are going in the soil over here. My shadow is really making this hard today, but it's very sunny. What else is happening in here? Oh, like I said, just some garlic back here. I think we've kind of randomly decided that this year, see all of these big patches of clover and other random things that are in this big garden plot. This is a bunch of purple dead nettle. That's a wild growing weed around here that I harvest and I use occasionally for pestos. You can put it in salads, smoothies, all that kind of good stuff. It's great, medicinal, lovely, love her work. Um, but a lot of this that has popped up around here, like the natural growing weeds, we're just gonna kind of leave and maybe scatter some more compost over this this year so that random stuff will grow in it again. Um, this is all of my kale plants that were eaten down over the winter season by the deer around here. It's okay. They just needed a little snack and I was done harvesting it anyways. But yeah, as you can see, it's really been taken over by like all of these weeds and grass and stuff because this was an original just like lawn. So um, all of the grass is like coming back up. But this is where our greenhouse used to be. And this soil over here is now pretty like weed free despite random patches of grass like this, um, which is really nice because we just put down a bunch of like potting soil and compost in here so we can plant in here this year as well. And then this part is mulched, which is really nice too because it has soil under it and then mulch. But we'll be adding some amendments as the seasons go on. I have a whole garden tour on my channel, by the way, from last year that I will link on the screen if you're curious. Now let's go to the front of the house. Okay. Here's our Christmas tree that we have to plant soon. Um, but here is where all of my like culinary herbs are and some medicinal herbs that I use for like tinctures and random stuff. This is my bed that has not been weeded in a hot minute. <laughs> so one of the natural growing 
herbs around here is this spearmint and it is prevalent as you can see even if it gets stomped down by people who just replaced our roof our roofers really stomped in this area it still prevails <laughs> like it completely comes out of here i tried to dig it up and plant it in this pot and as you can see it just completely thrives outside of it um, I need to get rid of this dead lemon balm plant, but in here I just have stuff like sage and majorum and some calendula plants that have not bloomed yet. So yeah, that's pretty much what's around here is just stuff that I like to have on hand. Oh, there's some lavender in here too. And things are just kind of coming back to life this year for us. So that's why I haven't really touched this part of the garden yet. Oh my God, the hummingbirds are back. The best time of year is when the hummingbirds are here. But yeah, man, I think that's pretty much all I have as my main gardening for beginners tips. Like you can easily just make garden beds from freaking wooden pallets that you find lying out by a dumpster somewhere. <laughs> or you can make really fancy ones if you so please as well. Or just plant directly into the ground without a garden bed. It really depends on what you're into. You could grow potted plants in your house. Again, I will link resources down below for apartment gardening and stuff like that. But as for just like my biggest tips, I would say compost your veggie scraps if you can do that near you. Also use resources around you if you don't have um, a plot of land but you've always wanted to kind of like garden in a little plot. There are city gardens and community gardens that are out there that also accept compost scraps so if you don't have a place to put your stinky scraps you could always bring your little tin to a community garden and dump them all in there. There's also compost drop-offs in places like New York City and just a bunch of other spots I'm sure. So it's definitely worth looking into in your city if you're interested in that kind of stuff because I feel like a lot of people who live in the city just kind of like assume that that stuff isn't there but there are people who have the drive and make it happen for where they're living and I have a lot of friends who participate in community gardens in Portland and love it so you could get your own little plot there get your own spring crops going this season and yeah just pay attention to what grows well where you live make sure that you have good soil amendments and add things in if you're soil's looking a little weird. We love our compost, our mulch, our hay, all the good stuff to break it all up. And yeah, I hope this was helpful. I really just wanted to make this to be like, hey, you can grow food too, no matter where you live. I know that some people have more resources than others, but if you are in a city, it just takes a little Google to find the things around you. And yeah, I hope this drove you to look those things up. I hope that you're not freaking too much out at the global pandemic happening right now. You know, stay your asses inside, but also taking that sweet, sweet outdoor air if you live in an unpopulated area and aren't coming into contact with like hundreds of people if you step outside of your house. I would assume that probably not hundreds of people are on the street right now in major cities, at least I'm hoping. Anyways, I love you. Stay inside, wash your hands, be courteous to others' health not just your own. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up for me. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Ring the notifications bell if you'd like to be notified when I upload. You can become a patron of mine if you want to support my earnings for this month. And until my next video, stay smiling. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.